Hey everyone, so we're just going to go over two ways to add MIDI data and have it played back in Pro Tools. There's sort of the old school way and then the slightly newer way, and both have their own benefits. So the two options are either doing a MIDI track combined with an auxiliary input track, so an aux input track, so that pair can be set up, or we have a track that combines the two called an instrument track. So let's do the old school way first. And what we're going to do is start off with just a MIDI track. So I'm going to go ahead and do shift control or command N, and that's going to bring up my new tracks dialog. I'm going to make a MIDI track. You'll notice that the, there is no stereo or mono width for MIDI tracks because really they're just MIDI data. It doesn't actually play anything by itself. It's just like a piece of sheet music. So we're going to go MIDI piano, and I'm going to hit create. And that's going to be our MIDI track. And then we're going to create um, another track. And that one is going to be a stereo aux input. And that is going to be our actual virtual instrument, so our piano VI, piano virtual instrument. That's going to be the player of the sheet music from the MIDI piano data. So I now have two different kinds of tracks. So I'm going to look in the mix window here. Notice that's the MIDI track. You can't really add anything to it. It's kind of like a, it's just a place to hold data. And then that is going to end up pointed at the piano virtual instrument. And that's going to be our player. So it's like sheet music and player. Okay, so I'm going to just drag some MIDI data onto that MIDI track from my desktop. All right, so we've got this kind of 80s tune here that we haven't heard yet, but we couldn't hear anything. If we play back, there's not going to be anything there. We can see it's trying to tell us there's stuff there, but it's really just a piece of sheet music. It's not being played by anyone yet. So what we're going to do is I'm going to switch over to the mix window, and right here in the top insert, and if you can't see inserts, Make sure you go to View, Mix Window Views, and make sure one of the sets of inserts is showing. A through E kind of makes sense. I'm just going to use the top spot. And I'm going to click that top spot, and then Multi-Channel Plugin. Then I'm going to go into a submenu down to Instrument. And then I'm going to go down to, I don't know, Mini Grand. So that one's going to be easy enough. We're doing It's a really simple piano plugin. Comes with Pro Tools, so it should work for everybody. That will load up our mini grand piano. You notice there's this little red line as it loads. And we still aren't going to hear anything. Why is that? Because our player doesn't know what piece of sheet music to read. So what we need to do is have the output of our mini track head over to our mini grand. Now, that won't show up until you've actually created, instantiated, a virtual instrument on the aux input track. So know that this list will be empty until you've actually created something here where this guy's waiting to play something, right? This is our musician, and we got to get that sheet music to them. So we're going to take our output, and I'm going to go with Piano VI Mini Grand. And that should be that guy. And let's see if we just play it back now. And we have it. So our MIDI data is going from this MIDI track over to our MIDI grand piano. And then that's coming out our outputs. So this method works great if your virtual instrument is capable of doing a whole bunch of different things. Like you have eight different sounds that the same instrument is going to play. And you can have a separate MIDI track, each one pointed at a different... Uh, channel on that virtual instrument. So you end up having a single virtual instrument and like eight different sets of sheet music, each going to a different channel. Now that doesn't happen on Mini Grand, but just to see that real quick, say that we used uh, Expand instead. So Expand's going to have different channels and depending on what's on, so like the A channel, the B channel, and so forth. If we come over here, notice I have four channels now. So what you could do is have one MIDI sheet music kind of track going to channel one, and that's one sound. And then you can have another MIDI track, and I'll just make one real quick. 
So here's our MIDI track. And then say that some like it's MIDI 2, whatever it's going to be. And then I can have that one point also to that instrument, right? But channel 2. So then whatever's on channel 2 of that instrument might be a totally different sound will be triggered by this MIDI data. So you can do this kind of old school method where everything's separated out when you have a whole bunch of different MIDI channels in your virtual instrument that can each be triggered separately. So generally you don't need to do that, especially if you're just using built-in things. Uh, there's no reason you can't just have like eight expand plugins that are all duplicated because it can handle that, right? MIDI stuff doesn't tend to do. At least the ones that are built into Pro Tools are all pretty low uh, system intensity. Okay, let's do the other way. So the other way combines the sheet music MIDI track with the aux input track that can hold a plugin to play the data. So I'm going to go new track again. And I'm actually going to mute these guys. So we're actually po positive we're not hearing anything. So if I play back my session right now, I hear nothing, right? And that's what we want right now because we want to do this another way. So new track. I'm going to go stereo instrument track, and this is going to be my piano. And I'm just going to call it piano because that's that name hasn't been used. So create. And what this does, since it's an instrument track, I'm going to move it all the way to the right. So this is an instrument track. You'll notice it looks a whole lot like the aux input. The difference is if you go to view and mix window views and click instruments, you will see it has this special little instrument uh, setting up here, which is basically this MIDI track converted into going right here. And this top thing here that says all, that just means it's accepting input from any MIDI device that's connected to your computer. And then once you have an instrument on there, it should automatically set this to whatever instrument I put on the insert. So let's try it. Let's put mini grand on this one. There it is. There's Mini Grand, and you notice it automatically set up. So it's really like it took the MIDI track and the aux input track, combined them, and it does all the linking of those two right there in one spot. The other cool thing about that is when you're dealing with the MIDI data, it also resides on that same instrument track. So everything's in one spot. So I'm going to option click and drag right over to there. So that's Option or Alt, I believe, on Windows. And then if I play that guy back, I get the same result. So in this case, our MIDI data is sitting on the track. It knows where to go, what to point it at, and where to take input from if we want that. And then we've got our MIDI grand playing it back. And the cool thing about MIDI, of course, is you can change your player, your whoever's doing the playing, right? Whatever virtual creature is doing this and like pick a different thing. I have no idea. Uh, how about soft leads? Let's pick a random Euro dance. Let's try that one. So the great thing about MIDI is you always have the same data, right? The information is there, and then you change what plays it back, and you get all kinds of cool uh, variety. Have a great time with it, right? Maybe synth basses. Oh, it's too short, but still fun. So that's the general idea for those two. So one is have your sheet music and your player separate, or use the combination. And then you should also be able to tell if you record enable either your instrument track and then play on a MIDI controller. I'm just playing on my MIDI keyboard that's plugged into the computer via USB. Right? It's plugged in. The computer kind of knows what's plugged into it. Right? So whatever happens to be able to uh, communicate that data is plugged in. And since I have all on and I record enabled, it automatically went, oh, there's stuff coming from that keyboard that he's playing. Right? And then it works. And that works the exact same way 
with our combo track. So if I delete, I'm just going to get rid of one. Okay, those aren't muted anymore, but that one is. Here's our player. Here's our sheet music. I can hit record enable on our, on the MIDI data, and then play some notes. And right away, we got whatever setting is on this version of Expand. So hopefully that makes sense. Two ways to make uh, MIDI data get played, right? So either MIDI and aux or the combo thing called an instrument track. Okay, have fun.